and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for a deck I like to call Johnny's Pride. So this deck was originally a donation deck at the very, very beginning of the M20 format. Um, it was fun to play. Basically, it's based around a Johnny Strength of the Pride this new planeswalker that you just don't don't see too often you know you just don't see this card too often and uh, wanted to give it a home now the deck did have a whole lot of one drops uh you know like uh that they were based around gaining life um like one drops that i'm not thinking of healer's hawk um and cards like that little one drops legions landing and those cards were all pretty weak just in general and so uh, trying this deck out again, trying cutting cutting those one drops, getting Tithe Taker and more removal in here instead, and added a couple of lands, and seeing how it plays is more of a mid range deck. So we have our life gain theme, um, but yeah, we're so we're a Johnny Strength of the Pride. We have a Johnny's Pride Mate, Bloodthirsty Aerialist, right? So we're we're a life gain theme deck, like we're trying to gain life and uh, make these creatures really big. Um, of course, a Johnny does that, plus a Johnny can make more of Johnny's Pride Mates. Uh, Soren is a really key part of our deck, too, given our creature's lifelink. And also that, that tick up trigger is just one lifelink damage to grow things. Um, I'm putting in Bell Haunts. You know, like this was a card that wasn't in there before. But I think Bell Haunts could be awesome to follow up Pride Mate and Aerialist. It's just a solid card. It gains us life. It's good interaction, good body, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so trying some Pride Mates in, or sorry, some Bell Haunts in here also. Um, so there, there we go. So that's, that's, that's what we have here. We have like a, a black, white mid range deck focused on our life gain theme. This card right here, bloodthirsty aerialist. This is the card that has looked really impressive whenever I've played this card in different, uh, life gain kind of decks. Cause it gets very big and it has flying. So it's very hard for opponents to deal with. Uh, the fact that it's a three mana card and three toughness are both pretty, important right now same with like the resplendent angel with legions landing wrong card sorry legions end there we go with legions end being such a highly played removal spell uh actually having three drops is something that's more valuable than uh than it has been in the past because of legions end is just really valuable against scape shift and vampire so lots of people are playing all these legions ends kind of the same thing like cry of the carnarium is another widely played sweeper. And so these these cards dodge Cry of the Carnarium also. So it'll be interesting to try them out. I'm going with uh, two gain life lands to be able to trigger these things, and then two temples. Instead of just all temples, we're playing a couple of gain life lands to trigger those as well. Sideboard, we got Command the Dread Horde. So like whenever we play against uh, removal heavy control decks, you know, like Esper Control, Grixis Control, that kind of stuff, we're going to be bringing in Command the Dread Hordes to help us out there. Um, got some devout decrees, which are definitely good against the vampire deck. They get rid of Soren as well. Um, I don't think we really need moment of craving in the main moment of craving, of course, is going to be good against, uh, vampires, but I don't think we need it in the main. I think I'd rather have the cast downs in the main, uh, to kill a wider variety of creatures. But let's, let's give this deck a try again. Let's see if we can have a Johnny strength of the pride find a home in standard um i don't think i have mortify there may be one mortify in the sideboard yeah disbark disbark gets rid of wilderness reclamation um was i just going with disbark yeah so just disbark for to get rid of wilderness reclamation That matchup's going to be kind of tough, but yeah, I, I'm not really built towards trying to win that matchup. All right, so I think I should save the Scoured Barons to trigger the Pride Maiden, the Aerialist.
All right, just kind of waiting on the opponents. I'm going to finish <clears throat> getting the Teamer Hydra video up on the YouTube channel. The last couple of things to do with that. All right, so it's good to go. I do, Roach. Yes, I do. All right, there we go. Explosive apparatus. Hey, Hawkeye. Oh, you're coming up for the Ajani deck? Okay, definitely want to join for this deck. <laughs> I do remember that Flying Gravedigger game. <laughs> that was a sad game. That was a lot of fun, though. I was like, there's no way this Gravedigger can kill me. Or, like, I didn't, I didn't think I was going to lose. I was at, like, two life or something like that. And they just, like, played a card that, like, gave their Gravedigger flying <laughs> and killed me. And I was all sad. I don't know. Is this, is this the mono blue deck? No. No, okay, no, not not the deck I was thinking of. Hey, what's up, Kalua King? Still here for the 30, no, 10th, 10th month in a row. It was the 30 seconds of the day. That's where I saw the 32 there. 10th month in a row. Thank you so much there, Kalua King. Sticking with it. We're going to scour the barons. Look at that. Play a land, put a counter on all your creatures. That's a pretty powerful land. I don't know. This, this may be some, some kind of combo deck. This could... Like... I didn't I don't remember this deck playing so many colorless lands, but maybe this is just a all colorless deck. I don't know, do I I feel like how I'm gonna lose is gonna be some some kind of sweeper or something. So I probably so I shouldn't play the resplendent angel. Hey, what's up, Rhinon? Yeah, I was thinking, like, I I saw a deck like this that was, like, mono blue that had, like, these cards with, like, Flood of Tears that, like, you put them back in your hand and, like, Ugin makes them cost, like, no mana and you, like, replay them and stuff. Yeah, the Matt Nast deck? Yeah. But there's no, like, islands or anything over here. I don't know what, like, these are all just colorless stuff. Rhinon, thank you so much for that Twitch Prime sub. New sub here. Welcome to the channel. I have faced worse than the likes of you. Oh, thank you very much. Glad you're enjoying the YouTube videos. Not everybody 
Oh, you can only activate that sorcery speed? Wow, that's rough. Oh, right, we don't have quad white. I feel like I need to ox my opponent a question about this deck here. Yeah, I'll do the Arena MCQ. I'll stream that and everything. I'm likely going to play the Grixis Control deck that we played earlier. <laughs> oh, my, my joke was really awkward. Yeah, this Chalice Art is really beautiful, isn't it? Top deck Soren for Lethal. Does one damage. Down to four, then the two oxes. Finish it out. <laughs> Ox Stompy. <laughs> it's Ox Lethal. You don't you don't play very many games where you get Ox Lethal. Um I guess I guess to spark? Duress. Doesn't seem like we really need Legion's End. Or Cast Down, to be honest. Or Othakaya. I mean, I could play a Command the Dread Horde to try to bring a bunch of stuff back if our stuff dies. I could do that. Hey, Ranting Ravager. Welcome to the channel. Santa Paul. Helping out there. Thank you so much there, Paul. Y'all have been very, um, very gifting today. And I really appreciate that. I <laughs> did nothing to deserve it other than an ox bun. It was a good ox bun, though. It was a good one. We'll see if I'm supposed to play Command the Dread Horde or not after this. Ooh. That's a good call. Command Command the Dread Horde my opponent's Karn to turn off my opponent's artifacts. Okay, that's that's some big game right there. That's what I'm talking about. That's some big game right there. Fountain of Renewal. Pretty good art there too. It looks it's like a just a tad like I don't know if blurry is the right word. It feels like it's not quite focused. But it's it's the It's like the essence from the fountain, you know, the renewal essence. It's pretty cool art. Hey, open-minded. 
<laughs> yeah, we, we did. We did just give our opponent the hard ox life. This is a prime day for justice. Share my, my light. Whoa, Jaja! Ja. Getting that sub from Frisky Biscuits. First gifted sub in the channel. Thanks there, Frisky. All right, Jaw, you get to get your hype boats in the chat now. Sahili's Silverwing. When it enters the battlefield, they get to look at the top card in my library. Okay, we're playing the cat deck. How happy are you right now? Aren't you so happy? I want to play my Hawkeye's favorite card. I seek a path to peace. We thrive when we support one another. I believe in you. So a Johnny's zero ability, we have to have 15 more life than our starting life total, but then it says exile a Johnny and each artifact and creature is your opponent's control. So we can exile all their artifacts with that zero ability. Firian, what's up? Thanks for that support as well, Firian. And keep it on that that streak here three months now thank you very much you think the ajani token is the worst art of any magic card that, that super strong kitty Hmm. A pure soul can inspire others. I believe in you, friend. We'll get the resplendent angel on the new Johnny's Pride Mate out here. Guys, all happy about our our kitty deck here. Big fan of our Johnny deck. Either that or getting scratches. All right, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go Bell Hunt. Gain three life. I don't know if I've ever done a Johnny Zero ability. And then we're going to give the Resplendent Angel lifelink. Prepare for battle. So now we're at 35. So 15 more life. You exile a Johnny. And all their artifacts. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool, Hawkeye. Johnny sacrificed himself to take out all those artifacts. He's a hero. <laughs> Hawkeye was impressed. <laughs> I 
Yeah, Hawkeye's like little Johnny. He's purring. Well, bunch of good cards. Amanda doesn't help us out too much, but we're on the draw. We have like the temple to scry to start with to look for another basic. Here. Oh. Sorry, Johnny. Our what our opponent's doing is pretty mysterious. We don't know what they could what they're gonna be doing here after just seeing one land. Furry little creatures. X green tramp. Star star trample. This could be blue green flash. Or Tithe Taker, very good against blue green flash. If it's like Nexus or anything like that, I'd rather have Pride Mate. Let's go with the Pride Mate. Can't be countered. Oh, it is blue-green flash. Should have tight tickered. Power and toughness equals X. Uh, I gotta focus on this. Alright, I'll just trade those things off. I think that's a pretty good trade for me. Right now, their, their creature would be a 3-2. With just the ability to get bigger. Yeah, it would have been nice to have that Tithe Taker in play originally. Should have played that first. It's just hard to know, you know, like just Temple of Mystery. It's so mysterious. And Forest. You don't see that much Simic Flash around these days. It's not that popular. Yeah, Hawkeye gets 1-1 one, one counters whenever he eats food. <laughs> Do you want a pen? Nope. Not just when he gains life. Hoping to draw land. Am I gonna trade with Frilled Mystic? So I want to be able to play Resplendent, Resplendent. So trading with Frilled Mystic's not a good trade, just like overall. But as far as like making sure that we don't, like that we can stay alive long enough, I think it's a good trade. But it's it's not one that I normally want to do. Honestly, I should just play the Gideon first, because like my opponent's definitely countering the Gideon. I think. I should maybe just like lead with Gideon and then play Resplendent. I don't know. Cause 
See, if we would have just been taking it from the other creature, it would have taken like another six damage if we would not have, you know, if we weren't going to be blocking with this thing. It's all about if they have removal or not. They had removal. Yeah, that was that was the game. If they didn't didn't have removal, we would have done good. If they didn't, we lost. All right, well, should have led off with the tie taker. Learned our lesson there. Um, I don't know. This is kind of this is kind of rough. Hmm. What do I actually want to be doing here? I'm not sure. I don't think I can play this many four mana cards. Yes, Elijah, I answered you earlier. I am playing the MCQ on Arena, and I'll be streaming it. And like I said before, I am likely going to be playing Grixis Control, the deck we played earlier. So we'll have Tithe Taker to start with. Let's get white mana. Not white mana. Alright, uh, yeah, yeah, no problem, Elijah, sorry. Hey, congratulations there, Paul. All right, we got Resplendent Angel in. That's good news. Hopefully we keep drawing some lands here. Hmm. No land, so as far as counter spell goes, I'd, I'd much rather the Aerialist get countered than Resplendent Angel. And I, I want to, like, if we draw a land, I want to be able to double spell with the Pride Mates. Thanks. Yeah, I've, I've done I've I've done a uh, a ton of competitive stuff in my past. But I'm just streaming full time now. Hey, what's up, Unsung? Gifting out some more subs. Wow, everybody keep getting this hype in the channel. Thank you so much there, Unsung. I appreciate that greatly. Thank you so much. So, Delotrius, Nomad, KYS, 
Wombler, and Vuge. All joining in on the subtrains. Let's see. Let's go. Let's go Pride Mate here. All right, so that gets us to our our fourth sub goal of the day. Well, so basically, I don't want to play tight. I don't want Tithe Taker to get countered. So I want to I want to try to draw a land next turn and then go like Pride Mate then Tithe Taker. That's what that's what I want to do. Because yeah, I def like the Tithe Taker is the most important card for sure. Alright, Tithe Taker number two is in there. So yeah, another Frill Mystic would cost six mana. But, you know, like they may have that. They have they have a lot of lands there. All they need is a land drop. Ooh, all right, so no. So, you know, doing this kind of pre-combat because we get to see, you know, I don't want to attack Resplendent Angel into Trickster, right? Like, worst case scenario, they, they like, Trickster the Angel and then, like, you know, trade with the Frilled Mystic. Like, that's not a good trade for me. So that's why I want to play stuff pre-combat, see if they tap out or not. Yeah, our deck doesn't have a ton of life gain. Or like you know, it doesn't have like an absurd amount of life gain or anything. Soren Soren and Johnny are a big life gain stuff, but especially how I sideboarded here. I don't have lots and lots of life gain. <laughs> Three mana opt. I do I do have some I have two of the black white life gain lands. I have two of those and two temples. Well they can't play anything else. They're tapped you know, because everything else costs two mana, so they're tapped out. Alright, Tithe Taker's coming through clutch. Yeah, see I like I boarded out like Othakaya's and Bell Haunts. Those are life gain cards. Maybe I shouldn't have all those out. No, I like what we got going on here. Let's run it back. Going down to six. Opponent kept seven, so lucky. Swift Warden. not looking so great for us. I mean, if we just draw white mana, we'll be doing awesome, but we have to draw white mana. No, I mean, the... No, I... I think the mulligan system is ve very generous right now with the London mulligan rule.
get that life gain in. Gain a life. See who would have triggered. And Johnny's pride made if we had one in play. Yeah, we're a 25 land deck. We had one land and then two lands with our two mulligans. Hopefully we start drawing some though. Looks like our opponent's flooding out. Darn it. <laughs> we need white mana. Well, we're good against a wolf. We got a couple of removal spells for a wolf in here. Alright, so they're done hitting land drops, so they probably have like four counter spells there. Double unsummon. A little surprised they didn't unsummon their own creature, but maybe they're saving that. It'll be hard to kill a wolf, of course, with double unsummon. Oh, Frilled Mystic. Do you know cards awesome with Unsummon? Frilled Mystic. So they unsummon, I dispark, they unsummon again. So we're trying Resplendent Angel and Dispark for two unsummons, basically. The unsummons were just frilled mystics. You want a white weenie? Boros or Azorius? Do you have any any preference on those? On which one? Maybe I just shouldn't be attacking. Okay, I can I'll 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 look around for a good one there. I'll do some research. All right, so I guess I could have could have attacked. I I kind of decided to do that noxious grass play after, you know, after combat. Wasn't really the best for me. Yeah, I'm sure attack for that three there. So 
So they get to syncopate for two and draw a card. If I would have drawn a land. I mean, I could have played this thing, I guess, and not let them draw a card. Yeah, I guess maybe I should have done that. I just thought Resplendent Angel is more important, right? So, like... But they have three draw steps to get a counterspell. Spectral Sailor is such a hell of a card. You know, doing that so that, you know, we may have the chance to double spell with these. I want to double spell. I want to get these flyers in play. Beating Spectral Sailor is going to be really tough. Couldn't capitalize on their Flood. Just too, too slow. And now Sailor wants them to use all this extra mana. I think that last turn, I think I should have... I mean, well, obviously how the Vampire resolved, I wish I would have played Resplendent Angel. Resplendent Angel is a card that could have won me that game. Um, and they only had one card left in hand. I guess I should have played the Resplendent Angel there instead of the Vampire, because letting that, un letting that un untap and keep... You know, obviously if their last card was a Counterspell, then I would have felt bad. Um, but it's just a, a higher probability they have a Counterspell the next turn. I think I don't think I don't think uh, Little Teferi is stopping the flash deck as much as other people think. I think the vampire deck is really is the thing that's really keeping it in check right now. How powerful and aggressive the vampire deck is. I think that's the tougher for Simic Flash than Little Teferi is. All right, well, they're going to have to discard anyway here this next turn. Wow, no Risen Reef? Or nothing? Gross Spiral. Well, these Legion's Ends look kind of dead. So it looks like we don't have any cards in hand. So we're hoping two, three, fours can kill our opponent. Everyone belongs in a place that they can call home. True friends always stand by your side. Uh, you can't Legion's End your own creature. Check there. It's only creatures and opponent controls.
Every story is an opportunity for new data. No tales should be discarded. Friendship feeds the soul. I've learned little here. All right, let's see what our opponent's got. They got like flooded tears. Nope. All right, so, <clears throat> so I'm not exactly sure what they're doing there. Like, are they an elemental deck? I don't know. We're gonna bring in these duresses to spark. Doesn't really seem like we need like legions in cast down all these other things maybe keep a cast down in oh tight taker get that back in here i don't know like they, they definitely could be elementals like the thing about flooded tears is you have to have permanence for flooded tears they have to be playing permanence so i would expect elementals but we just didn't see any elementals there that game so that's what i would expect thanks elijah all right yeah i'll put i'll put together a white weenie deck for you Yeah, it looks like Omniscience combo here. Oh, we got Noxious Grasps. Let's play those. That kills Tamio and... Let's play those like instead of Othakaya's. Okay, I like that. <laughs> yeah, Steely Dan's one of my favorite bands. That was Black Cow by Steely Dan there. Really? They I didn't even know this this avatar wasn't around anyway. They took it down and then you couldn't get it. And you you went the next day to buy this avatar and it was gone. I didn't even realize it was gone. I don't know like why does I don't know why Wizards just even gets rid of those. Doesn't make the most sense. I don't just take the growth spiral. Hey, Dust Jockey. Welcome to the channel. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah, they didn't announce it at all. Like, I would, I would kind of understand. Like, if you're gonna pull it, you announce it, and you, you create like a sense of urgency that people are like, oh man, I need to go buy this. But like, if you don't, if you don't tell people that it's going away, and it just kind of goes away, it's like, what's What are we doing here? Defend the weak at every opportunity. I will lend you my strength. Look, why not? Why not let people spend money on products? Oh, thanks, Des Des Jockey. Thanks, a great MTGA channel. Uh, I got punished for not using the Noxious Grasp. Definitely considered, you know, Noxious Grasping that, but looks like I should have. I also want to get the Gideon out here for a fast clock. That was nothing. Hmm. Your light will cleave the darkness. Do I go double grasp or do I bell hunt? Probably need a They are elementals. I've fought worse. I believe in you. Get him, Gideon. Go get him.
Yeah. Let's make this quick. I've got other things to burn. Chandra's gonna be tough to beat. Hmm. Hopefully no lava coil. <laughs> no pressure. Our opponent hasn't been playing lands last couple of turns, which is a bad sign for me. But yeah, I was thinking like maybe they have ground creature that blocks Bell Haunt to kill Chandra. And they are still just not even playing lands. Um, not doing it, Timmy. Well, yeah, the, the aerialist is three. They're both three attack, right? Like, but then the aerialist would be four attack the next turn where the bell haunt stays three attack each turn. But if I, they want a Chandra minus three. Is that their goal? I mean, I'm happy with risen reef off the battlefield. If they're playing a Chandra minus three, I mean, I'm happy with that trade. Like, do they have lightning strike? Yeah, I am very happy with that trade. Utterly is the best way to destroy things. Oh, they just have another Chandra. That's why they would do that. They they have to have another Chandra, right? I hope not. No, they have one card in hand. I make them discard. It's not a land. Also, we know it's a spell. No, it's just a land we're off. But playing Resplendent Angel means that if we draw a land, we'd be able to activate Resplendent Angel, which would have been awesome. Well, now they have Cavalier Thorns. And they suddenly have all these creatures and stuff. Is that land number eight? It's number nine. Ugh, I get to draw a card with Omnath. This Cavalier of Thorns and this Omnath. All right, I think we're going to need to sideboard a little bit differently. <clears throat> now seeing more of their deck. A Johnny Strength of the Pride would be an awesome draw step. Can we draw a Johnny Strength of the Pride, please? So yeah, I thought this was like a combo deck from like everything we saw the first game, but no, this is just an Elementals with 
that has Flood of the Tears. Alright, well, we're probably dead. Them having six cards in hand. Yeah, they're playing a bunch of land worlds and everything. Yeah, they just had a weird hand before. Do I want to get rid of the Bell Hunts? Is that the card that I want to take out? No, Tithe Taker. Tithe Taker just doesn't matter here. Don't need all these duresses either. Yeah, Legion's End is is okay against a lot of their stuff. You know, like the the two, you know, it hits the two mana creatures and hits Hydroid Crisis. So it hits like, you know, 12 creatures, but like the, the mana creatures aren't the most important. I'm going to play this. I don't think Dreadhorde's gonna work too well. Like we saw like that game, I had like no creatures in my graveyard. Like they don't they don't kill stuff too much. Like their their main removal spell that we saw was Lava Coil. Um Lava Coil was the thing that was messing me up in that exile, so But they, they don't pressure very much, but I'm just I'm kinda worried about stuff actually going to the graveyard. I guess we get to take their things though. I kinda forgot about taking their things. Yeah, maybe I should be playing Command the Dreadhorde with this. Killing 26 zombies with Legion's End. Nice. There's not... I mean, Deathstrokey, I guess, like, Scapeshifter Vampires. Like, those are those are, the, those are certainly the two top decks right now. But you can get to... You know, you can rank up with any deck. And, you know, what deck you should play also kind of varies on the player. Like, some, some people like playing aggro decks more. Some people like playing control. Um, you know, and so on. And it... So it's it's kind of hard to say for me to tell you without knowing you like exactly what deck to be playing and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, maybe you're like closer to having one deck on arena than another deck or, or so on. So. Cool. Darkwing Drake, you're playing the Teamer Hydra deck. Feels pretty good. Awesome. Glad to hear. Yeah, the Jun Dinos felt really strong whenever we played that. But to be fair, we were we were getting pretty lucky with the Jun Dinos. Um, we always like basically every game we had like one of the two mana uh, red creatures all the time. You know, it, it was uh, Marauding Raptor and whatever the other one was. Um, we had those all the time, and it, it was just sped up our deck a lot, and our deck was really impressive. We're playing four drop tribal over here. So 
So like Kaya's Wrath, the Cavalier of Thorns. Now Kaya's Wrath here, they they go grab Omnath. Or I just can tempt it, they don't get Omnath. But it's just their draw step is Omnath. Their draw step being Omnath is not really that big of a deal for me. It's not really that bad. It's not like they don't like draw an extra card. It's just they they would draw an Omnath if they want. I think that's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, probably... Yeah, if, if your mana supports it, I'd recommend Kai's Wrath over Cleansing Nova. If your mana supports it. Alright, only one red source as far as Chandra is concerned. I don't think I'm winning this game. Our opponent is certainly going bigger than us. Which is a problem. If you haven't heard of me, then get ready to meet my flames. <laughs> Kayak's Wrath. What you got over there? Just, I mean, there's only so so many choices the Chandra can do. It's either plus two or minus four. That's it. I had to use a timeout. It's only plus two or minus four. Attack or no attack. Yeah, I guess I guess our opponent disconnected. Our opponent disconnecting is kind of like the only reason that I can think of also that would be going on here. Yep, looks like disconnection. I can always do better next time. So like we should have like an emblem like if they let's say like they tick up I'd be at like 24 and then 23 and then 22 whether my opponent kills me or not it's probably not that emblem I mean you know like we can gain some life too it's they're going to overwhelm us and and stuff For all these cards that we've seen our opponents play though here it does make their game 1 keep pretty bad their game their hand game 1 looked Awful compared to like these hands games two and three. Let us see if your talents are worth cataloging. So at least we got a game because they kept a terrible hand. So that's about all that we're going to be getting here. Let me aid your research. Ooh, that's a great one. Wow, we're back in it. All stories must end. So now they can't regrab lava coil.
Well, Resplendent Angel, can you beat a Krasis and an Omnath? It'll be tough. Especially this Omnath just draws infinite cards. But those cards aren't very good. That doesn't make sense to block that. We're winning this race. If I had one more mana, I could go Bell Haunt plus Strength of the Pride to gain the 5 life, but we're at 7 mana. I definitely want to gain that 5 life. You gonna get there, Resplendent Angel? The Angel takes it down. So even, even if our opponent didn't disconnect there, they would have attacked us for four, and like let's say they like let's say they ticked up and you know gave us the emblem and attacked us for four. Uh, you know, the four would have put us at fourteen. That emblem, it was like, you know what, like four turns probably. It would be at like ten. So assuming if they would have emblemed, I think we still had that. Uh, there. If they would have, like, minused, maybe we don't have that, because then I think they have the extra Lava Coil. I think If they would have minus forward, we probably would have lost that game. Because they, they have the extra Coil that the Coil kills the Resplendent Angel. Yeah, my, not minus threeing the Tamiyo to just grab the Lava Coil back, but, of course, we had no creatures on the battlefield, so they probably thought that they could just, like, minus it again and just, you know, look for Krasis. Was... A little greedy there. Yeah, I think so, Redbeard. I, th I do think Grixis is pretty good right now because because I do like it against. Um, vampires and scape shift. So it's it's the deck. It's my leading choice right now for deck to play the MCQ with this weekend, next weekend, like an eight days weekend. So I'm thinking this is Feather, led with Tithe Taker, so, they, so it's harder for them to have like mana for protection spell on my turn. Bunch of wind scarred crags over there. Wow. Well, looks like we're probably going to lose. <laughs> I don't have any lands. And I don't have removal for a feather. My only removal for a feather is contempt, and we are a lot of mana away from a contempt. Jeez, come on. Yeah, the the Grixis control deck that we played earlier today. That deck. We didn't have the best luck with it today, but um But that's okay. Well, 
If we draw land, we get to Othakaya and kill the Burning Prophet and attack them for a bunch. Or we're just attacking this Gideon for a bunch. Let me lead the charge into darkness. I don't know why the Gideon was post combat. Share in my light. Soren could be really nice. We draw land. Soren and then attack with like a whole bunch of lifelink tithe takers and grow this pride mate up a bunch. Our opponent can't really attack Soren either with the Othakaya. It's pretty nice. I'm a tad surprised, though. No, I guess they don't want to use Intervention to kill Aerialist or Pride Mate, I guess. It does take down God's Willing, and then if I have removal on my turn for Feather, so I, you know, maybe they just want to keep their four mana up for that. Um, Hawkeye, I need your, I need your luck. This is your Johnny deck right here. I'm sorry. I accidentally hit your foot. I was trying to grab the mouse and you're like, no, this is my mouse. All we need to do, all we need to do is draw land, play Soren, we win. It's easy as that. No, not draw Soren. This is almost just lethal, just attacking in. We're, we're just not in any rush, though. But I would like, you know, block Resplendent Angel, take 11, go to 3. Hooray! Because, like, I guess they were not scrying with the God's Willing. Oh, no, because I was tapped out. So, yeah, I don't know. They should be, yeah, they should be scrying with the God's Willing. <laughs> what a mess I've made. And that's definitely going to gain us five life, so Resplendent Angel will trigger. So all these, all these have lifelink, of course. All of our planeswalkers and creatures. Isn't that kind of weird wording? That's like, as long as it's your turn... Oh, no, it says creatures and planeswalkers. That's what I thought, but over here it says... No, it says creatures and planeswalkers. Never mind, I just I'm just misread it. Now. 
That's a lot of triggers. Well, Tide Taker actually looked pretty good there. I should probably have removal that kills Feather. Which this does, this does. That takes some stuff. That's good against things. This is good against stuff. All right. For bringing in all this removal, what are we doing? We're cutting Gideon. I think we actually cut Othakaya, even though it did some good work there. We just brought in all this other better removal. And then maybe just cut the Bell Haunts. And I don't have tons of life gain. But there's some in here. It's in there. Just got to look for it. They got a name for the Hawkeyes in the world. Yeah, we can keep this. Yep, Hawkeyes named after University of Iowa. That's where I was born. That's where Hawkeye's from, also. Cast down. Saving Devout Decree for Feather. He really likes the ear scratches. Like, I could just put his ear, like, on the table and, like, and rub his ear against the table, and he really likes those ear scratches like that. There is no greater treasure than quiet times with friends. My pride grows stronger. I'm not going to attack here. We saw our opponent have response resurgence last game. Chill for a minute. Hmm. Clarion gets us. Our true strength lies in our friendships. So I'm up I am opening myself up to another Clarion. But I think it's unlikely that they're just sitting with two Clarions. We thrive so Response with... Resurgence says it deals five damage, right? It's a response. Is it worth waiting that out? I could just wait that out. Aha! Play around removal, Hawkeye. Opponent gets frustrated and concedes.
Good job, Hawkeye. All right, we're three and one. Keep. Keep. And scry behind the wheel. I hope this is blue green flash again and not some big mana deck that's just going to completely ignore these tight takers and run me over. Darn. It's it's a teamer deck. Hey, I'd rather get have that shocked than the pride mate get shocked though. So many Risen Reefs. And we got pretty fortunate to beat the other Risen Reef deck. We'll see if we do it again here. Not loving our chances, though. Risen Reef is kind of too good of a card. Got to cast down it. Even though it doesn't use my mana very well. Can't really let them have Risen Reefs, though. I wish this hit Risen Reef. Oh my gosh. That would be great if Legion's End exiled Risen Reefs and took all those other Risen Reefs. Living Twister. That card's unnecessary. That's just gonna like kill my. It's just gonna shock my stuff. Another card we don't get to Legion's End. Like, should I be playing more than six of the Planeswalkers? Like, whenever we don't have a Johnny or Soren, like, you know, like this, it's it's a little rough when we don't have those. Teamer Elementals goes bigger than a Johnny's Pride does. I'm 
try this Command the Dreadhorde thing. Especially, yeah, they have Cavalier Thorns mill over a bunch of cards. Maybe it'll work. You never know. Maybe it will work. Beating up the wrong guy. The Tide Takers are definitely out. Not a matchup for them. Mage's End looked pretty bad. Maybe Moment of Craving. Or the Kaya's Wrath. All right, here we go. Oh, did I not put in to spark? Oh no, yeah, I need to spark. Oh, I forgot to put in to spark, Hawkeye. Maybe we'll win game two and we get to spark in for game three. All right, I know, I know it makes. Like that, that card's a little better to play later with the aerial list, but I want to. If we draw a two drop here, I want to be able to play it. Alright, just gonna slow him down. Because I have, I have a plan for. You know, I'm gonna be tapping out with my mana over the next few turns, so like I just wanna slow them down. Alright, maybe I should have a moment of craving that land war off. I was already playing that. Aerialist, though. I will be there. Friendship is the best cure. So I think my plan's Kaya's Wrath. I want to give them another turn to play some creatures. Though. They did not play any creatures. All right, Veil of Summer recycled. Go get him, Pride Mate. A good card. I'm hopefully drawing land, land. You know, I want to get to this command the dread horde. Stop. Omnath. Hmm. Oh, 
True friends always stand by your side. Okay. We're trying over here. So they have just one elemental in their graveyard to go with an Omnath. So like if I get their Omnath, they only get to do two damage. Risen Reef is just infinite cards. Yeah, make that attack. I love that attack. That attack is great for us. Get a Risen Reef in the graveyard. Come on. Come land. This. Come on, land. Oh my gosh. We're doing it. Okay. What do I got? I got 21 life. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 11... 14, 16, I guess this is just free, 17, Everyone belongs in a place that they can call home. so I have three elementals, <clears throat> Said the land of is free because we gain a life for each creature we control. So, you know, it, we gain one life for having it. Command the Dread Horde. Turning that game around. No crisis. Don't don't you do crisis? I guess I have cast down for crisis. That's not the worst. They're keeping two mana up. For like negate. I've already played two Veil of Summers. Um. Oh, I I tapped that way wrong. Now I can't can't play Moment of Craving also. Should I tap the land war elf? Or something? your inner strength. Yep. Could have attacked with the 6-6 six, six. if I tapped better and had the moment of craving or even the, the bloodthirsty. I could have attacked with everything. I did not. I did not tap that correctly. What I taught you.
Hopefully they're out in the gates. It's a great block around moment of craving. So doing this to get the extra two damage in, put him down to three. We got all these creatures out there at three. Four lethal attackers. They got two blockers right now. We will not fail. All right, so they got three blockers now. Let's see what else they got. All they just need is another creature. A removal spell. Okay, we're going to game three. Command the Dread Horde. Getting it for us. So they're all about those negates. So multiple negates, multiple Veil of Summers. Um, I think I'm going to take out an Oath of Kaya to bring in that to Spark. Definitely think we're an underdog here, but we've won three of the five games we've played against Team Elemental so far. Yeah. I mean, if we if we hit all of our land drops and we curve like turn two Pride Mate, turn three Pride Mate, turn four Bell Hunt. Turn five, we can tempt something. Turn six, command the Dread Horde. Maybe, but even then, like, just if they just have a couple of Risen Reefs, we're like dead. And what's how likely is it that we're actually hitting all these land drops anyway? What would I consider a better deck for attorney? Esper, Hero, Teamer, Elementals, or Grixis Control? Honestly, they're all about the same. It's That's honestly kind of dependent on uh, what... I am here to aid in the like, it really just depend on, like, whatever you can pilot the best Prepare and whatever you have the best, like, sideboard plans for, whatever deck you like the most, that, all that kind of stuff. Those are all... 
very similar power level. And like they, they can all do awesome. They could all uh, get trumped. I will lend you my uh, strength. You know, you can have a you can have a bad day and lose with any of the decks. You can have a good day and win with all the decks. It's it depends on what you want to play. This risen reef card. Light will cleave the darkness. <laughs> We're doing pretretty good today, Chronic Slayer. Yeah, we're playing some really long leagues here. I'm maybe we don't have time for Ban Arpo. Maybe I'll just move Ban Arpo to tomorrow. Because, yeah, we've been playing a bunch of long matches. But um, tons and tons of subscribers, lots of gifted su subs. Awesome, awesome day there. We're getting... Got a lot closer to our next 12-hour stream today. Hitting four sub goals. The land fights for us. Now we're only 13... Or we're at... So we're at 13 out of 20 sub goals now towards our next 12 hour stream. We got like a fifth of the way there just today. That was a good hit. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I can't play Aerialist and Soren. Bleh. It's just best to play the Soren. Now we got two, four, two, four, fours to block a couple lands here. Looks like a crisis though. Yeah, it'll be a big crisis. All right, Temple of Skylands. This would have been better as the Gain Life Land. Well, I don't know. We would have drawn a Plains next turn, but Gain Life Land... You know, would have triggered the Pride Maiden Aerialist there. Um, let's go Indestructible on a 4-4. Four, four. Share in my light. Uh, both these four fours attack Nissa. So to keep Nissa alive, they gotta <clears throat> chump block one of them. Krasis blocks one. They gotta chump the other.
guess I'll just do one one damage to myself. The weak feed the strong. We get to gain the life by doing the one damage to ourselves. If we would have ticked up and dealt one damage to them and they veil a summer, then it wouldn't have dealt damage and we wouldn't have gained life, so we got to actually get the counter on the aerialist and the pride mate this way. Now, I think it's to us, because, like, you know, we gain life anyway, so dealing one to us just doesn't do anything. I don't think we should do the one to... I guess... Yeah, the one the one to Gideon would be prevented, right? Because this prevents all damage dealt to it. So it'd be prevented, so we wouldn't, we wouldn't gain life, so we wouldn't trigger these. Because during, during your turn, prevent all damage dealt to Gideon. Wow, what a turn for our opponent, killing my Resplendent and my Soren. Wow, what a turn. What a turn. Oh, man, that's a killer. That's killer. Yeah, preventing damage will stop us from gaining a life because it's it's the Soren has life link, so it deals one damage but with life link. But if the damage is prevented, then you don't gain life because there's no damage there. All right, so Krasis blocks Bloodthirsty Aerialist. Wait, five nine thirteen. I just have thirteen in the air, right? Five nine thirteen. Good triumphs this day. I could have realized that earlier if I would have started thinking about that. We were just talking about that last turn. Yeah, I guess my opponent was hoping that we didn't see that. All right, Johnny's pride four and one now. Man, Soren is awesome. All right, final boss time. We do not have the extra life this time. Here we go. Let's get these final boss emotes in there. Here we go. This deck's been pretty sweet. Um... Yeah, it was Flash our loss? I don't remember. I don't remember if we lost to Flash or if we beat Flash. I don't remember. A Dragon Singleton. I think we lost a flash. I think that was our loss. Saving the Scoured Barons to put the counter on the Aerialist. They're just all Risen Reefs. Nothing but Risen Reefs. Yeah, I think Esper would be kind of I think Esper would be tough for us. Admittedly. Yeah, I haven't seen this much elementals like all week. Like I like I we've probably played against elementals like maybe three times all week and we've just played against it three times in a row here. This aerialist is about to be real big. I guess they have infinite cards though. Oh 
Well, they are down to two. Cards, that is. I mean, it's definitely better for me to play these things, but... Do we care? Maybe, maybe I don't care about their value from getting... Hmm. Maybe we can just play this Orin. You should put out the Angel. If I play the Angel, then next turn I definitely got to play Soren. I think Soren's better to play first because we get two triggers on this aerial list. Nissa does kill Soren, but we got a fast clock. There's a whole lot of basics from an elemental deck. So it doesn't seem like it's a three color deck with how many basic lands they have. You know, like I could I could see them missing a color and it, you know, being a three color deck. You know, like they could have a bunch of blue red lands, but if they're all basics, it's probably not a three color deck if they're all basic lands. Cool. Glad we saved the contempt for that thing. Jeez. Every leaf can. Well, if they have a crisis. I mean, I kind of feel like I maybe just need a bell haunt here. Because if this is a crisis, we're just like dead. <laughs> I think I do need to, to Bell Haunt here. It was Krasis. It's always Krasis. And no, I'm not going to attack. And I'm not going to let this Cavalier of Thorns die and get Krasis back, obviously. But then we'll just kill him. Alright, so Contempt, Cavalier, makes this 9 power, Soren makes a 10 power, they're at 9. Alright, game 1, game 1 down, nobody, nobody expects the Bell Hunt, they're probably thinking their Krasis was safe in their hand. Okay. So this time, we're definitely getting the Grasp. Dreadhorde, Despark, Wrath. Um, this is probably more of a manipulation deck too, though. Maybe. Tithe Taker out. So like, I wonder if I want more Duress. Tithe Taker out. Trim a couple bell haunts. Take out one kitty. And Othakaya. I guess Othakaya is better than Moment of Craving. Maybe a moment instead of a Legion's End. Legion's End can be really important against Krasis, though. That's kind of the best thing. Do I really need two Legion's Ends if it's basically just for Krasis? I don't know the answer to that question.
Yeah. So this deck's just two, th two threes and fours. That's all we got here. All right, well, they have a really fast hand. That's bad for us. All right, good sign already. All right, go and play your stupid Risen Reef. Better not Veil of Summer. Yay. Do you want to give them a chance to draw Veil of Summer here, of course? All right, starting with Gideon so we can start taking up Gideon towards six. Gideon Jura, at your service. I believe in you. We need more spells. Especially removal. You need to kill this Risen Reef. Get these things in the graveyard. No. I will lend you my strength. Come on, deck, we need spells, we need removal. I don't think we're going to attack for three with a Resplendent Angel. Cool. We got four. One less fiend to fight. Just pass? Just pass? What do they got going on over there? Chilling on like lands and negates. Just pass. Final boss defeated. Final boss defeated. Maybe they just had like. They had Veil of Summers and Negates and stuff like that. And then lands. Maybe those are their four cards. You know, like two lands, a Veil of Summer, and a Negate. Maybe. 5-1. Let's update this Pride record. We did it. I honestly... Like, playing those those games, I honestly thought that the elemental decks were just going to be outgrinding us. You know, that's what I that's what I really thought. Um, hey, what's... Hey, yeah, Panopticon. Yeah, you're just watching... Yeah, came on here to play, then... Yeah, you think Ramp's usually a good matchup for this deck, but you got destroyed. GG's, that's what I think, too. That's that's what I was going to say, too. I, I think that, that probably the elementals were... Like, they would go over the top of us. Um, but, uh, so I was really surprised. We played against three elementals in a row and, and won all of them. And we just kind of got there with some flying and everything. Um, some timely removal. Um, we had a couple of games like where Command the Dread Horde really helped us. You know, we had it in our hand there that last game, but we didn't, didn't need it. But yeah, just some, some timely flying and everything and a little bit of little, like just enough removal. Your hand at the end was five lands and a veil of summer. That's that's what I call it. That's why I, oh man, you had six cards? Man, that's really unlucky. Yet you, you just flooded out both those games. Um so yeah, I think uh well first game first game we were we were gonna get wrecked by the crisis, but the bell hot saved us, right? That first game. 
We were about to get wrecked uh, by Krasis. Um, <laughs> we did not. We did not play against a mill control deck. No, we did not. Um, yeah, if you would have just kept like that one extra, that one last Llanowar Elf in your hand, you know, obviously, obviously, it's just hard to know that there's just going to be a Bell Hunt coming. But if you if you would have kept like that one Llanowar Elf in your hand, um, but yeah, pretty cool little deck here. Uh, you know, we surprised, yeah, so we surprised our opponents a little bit, surprised how well it did. Um, Tithe Taker isn't really for the elemental matchup. You know, we saw we were boarding it out a lot, but it was good against the Flash deck, and I think this is a good card against Esper. I was talking about how Esper could be a little bit tough matchup. I think Tithe Taker is pretty good against Esper. It, it comes back, it stays alive, all that kind of stuff there. Hey, good dude with the resub, staying on that two months. And then also Panopticon with that sub as well. Thank you so much there, Panopticon. I really appreciate that. Yeah, GG's they just had there. Um, <laughs> thanks, Numbers. Glad you enjoyed the mill deck from yesterday. That was a lot of fun. But yeah, this is a, this is a, a, a fun deck. I think this is a good upgrade over the last time that we played the, the deck. I think this was um, a, a better, more competitive deck. Um... It worked out really well. I'm not sure if we need all four Bell Haunts. Maybe it should be like three Bell Haunt and get a fourth a Johnny or fourth Soren. Probably fourth Soren. Because like whenever we had Soren, our deck felt a lot better than than the times that we didn't have Soren um, in here. We did not play against like Scape Shift. I don't know if we'd really beat Scape Shift. Who knows? Probably not. But maybe we fly over and get enough life gain. I don't know. Probably not. Um, but there we go. That's a Johnny's pride Hawkeye's favorite deck here. So if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was a sweet one here. And if so, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there, but that's it here for a Johnny's pride. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video. Yeah. Gideon was really good for us. Gideon was awesome.